Ornithomimids. The Ornithomimids, or Ornithomimosaurs, were famous as the ostrich mimics. The Ornithomimosids are also called ostrich dinosaurs, were small dinosaurs that usually ranged between three and four meters long, although some were slightly larger. They were bipedal and bore a superficial resemblance to modern ostriches, such as a general structure of ground-living birds with a lightly built skeleton, compact body, long neck, and small skull. They developed a bird-like beak. Most of them were toothless. However, unlike modern birds, they had a long bony tail core and arms with clawed fingers. Although all the ostrich mimics have a very similar body plan, they can be distinguished by details of the beak, the hands, and the body proportions. Like modern birds, the ostrich mimics had hollow bones, which allowed them to have a reduction in body weight, but without reducing their strength. They would have been swift runners, especially fast, were the later ornithomimids. Scientists didn't know if these animals lived a solitary life or in herds. It was unknown until 2003, when a new discovery of a bed of bones in Inner Mongolia, consisting of 14 ornithomimid individuals, was found. Eleven of them were youngsters. The group was later described as Sinonithomimus. It was confirmed that the adults could run faster than the young individuals. The reason for their death is thought to be either a catastrophic event or an accident. Ornithomimids lived mainly in late Cretaceous times in parts of North America, East Asia, and Europe, and probably in Africa and Australia too. These animals may have roamed open countryside. Many ornithomimosaurs, including primitive species, have been found with numerous gastroliths in their stomachs, characteristic of herbivores. The diet most probably was herbivorous or omnivorous, as they ate both plants and small animal prey. Ostrich dinosaurs probably would have used their long arms and hook-like hands to pull down branches on which to feed. There was an abundance of ornithomimids in North America. Members of the Ornithomimidae include Gallimimus, Archaeornithomimus, and Cerimimus, Struthiomimus, and Ornithomimus. Ornithomimids are a sister group to the Tudontids. Despite these groups having many bird-like features, including feathers, they were not birds. Ornithomimus The Ornithomimus was first discovered in 1889 in Denver, Colorado, named by Othniel Charles Marsh in 1890 from a partial hand and foot. The name was derived from the Greek ornis, meaning bird, and mimos, meaning mimic, referencing the bird-like foot with the epithet meaning swift in Latin. Because ornithomimus was the first known ornithomimid, its name was taken to describe the genus type of the ornithomimidae. Ornithomimus, along with struthiomimus, were used as wastebasket taxons, where any bones that resembled the earlier material were almost automatically attributed to one of these genera as a new species. A similar case happened for the first two dinosaur genera ever named, Megalosaurus and Iguanodon. Fortunately for researchers, an almost complete skeleton of Ornithomimus edmontonicus was found but without the skull in 1917. Several other Ornithomimid genera are regarded by scientists as species of Ornithomimus. The classification of Ornithomimus has been complicated. It wasn't properly done until 1972, when paleontologist Dale Russell undertook a review of the Ornithomimids. The result of Russell's study was that Ornithomimus, along with Struthiomimus, had now each assigned separate valid genera. Ornithomimus had two distinct species, Ornithomimus velox and Ornithomimus edmontonicus. Russell also created two new Ornithomimid genera of Archaeorthinomimus and Dromysiomimus on the basis that Ornithomimus specimens could not be placed with the genus. However, 
Domitio Mimus is now seen as invalid, and this name is now usually recognized as a synonym to Ornithomimus, where the fossil material originally belonged. Further remains and study, however, may yet bring a change in the number of valid species. The main difference between Ornithomimus and other Ornithomimids is its more compact and shorter body length. It is estimated that the larger individuals were approximately 3.8 meters long. This theropod's weight was estimated at 135 kilograms, which is about 21 stones. With a shorter body, the dinosaur would have an adaption for greater agility. It would help this genus to make tighter turns than a longer-bodied animal. Ornithomimus had very long hind legs for the size of the body. The shins were considerably longer than the femur. The feet had three weight-bearing toes. Its tail was also long. It would have been carried off the ground and acted as a counterbalance. Although the species was not as long as those of other Ornithomimids, Ornithomimus's characteristics show that it was a running animal. Ornithomimus had a small but elongated head, with a fluted, toothless beak that was carried high from the body by a long neck. The eyes were large, enabling them to see other dinosaurs approaching from a long way off. After analysis of the skull, paleontologists found an enlarged brain cavity, suggesting that Ornithomimus had a large and well-developed brain for its size. It is believed that the development of the brain in this species is responsible for better control of the body and its movements. It would certainly be needed when trying to run away from chasing predators like Tyrannosaurus and Albertosaurus. Different tactics could be employed by a predator against a fast-running animal like Ornithomimus. From ambush to dashing out from cover and closing the gap between the chaser and their target, before the prey could quickly turn and swiftly escape. Ornithomimus was probably the fastest dinosaur in its ecosystem. Research carried out of scleral rings has indicated that Ornithomimus would have been active for short periods both during the day and nighttime hours. Like with other Ornithomimids, it is unknown for certain what sort of diet they had. Although they have descended from carnivorous ancestors, there is no evidence they ate meat. It is likely they were omnivorous, using their beak for browsing certain parts of plants or to pick up insects or other small animals, like lizards and primitive mammals. Perhaps they would have used their long neck to reach into the low vegetation. Due to the lack of teeth, this theropod probably swallowed food whole. Ornithomimus' arms and fingers were quite long and slender, and could have been used to reach out and grab branches. It had three fingers, with the first ones being longer than the others. The long arms and hands may have also been used when capturing prey, for a tight grip while holding the prey. Ornithomimus would probably be able to break an eggshell with the edge of its beak. The species is the best known of the Ornithomimids, and the remains are quite widely dispersed in what is now North America, and the East United States, including Arizona, Colorado, Montana to Canada, in the time of the Campanian to the Maastrichtian of the Cretaceous period. Likely places that Ornithomimus would have been widespread roaming were the swamps and forests. It was disputed if Ornithomimus's body was covered in feathers. Several skeletons discovered in Alberta brought new evidence and it is now suggested that Ornithomimus may have had feathers. These feathers may have been small and helped the dinosaur to keep warm. They were definitely not suited for flying. The research is still ongoing, but so far it is thought that if Ornithomimus really had feathers, it would have covered the upper body, but not the legs. Struthiomimus. Struthiomimus remains were discovered in 1901. However, at the time they were discovered by Lawrence Lamb to belong to Ornithomimus altus, the first Ornithomimid to be named. 
although it was the first complete ornithomimid skeleton to be found, it was badly damaged. It was not until 1917, when Henry Fairfield Osborne, the same man who named the Tyrannosaurus, assessed the specimens and found out that both species have differences in the bones, particularly in the hands. The tail was longer than that of Ornithomimus. Therefore, a new genus for the remains was created and named Struthiomimus. There are two described species, Struthiomimus altus and Struthiomimus sedens. The name meaning is ostrich mimic. Since then, the general term ostrich mimic has risen and is often used as an alternative of the more official ornithomimid to describe any individual from this group of dinosaurs. Struthiomimus' characteristics are the compact body, long neck, and long legs. This dinosaur's size was about 3 to 4.3 meters, or 10 to 14 feet long, 1.4 meters, or about 4 to 6 feet high at the hip. What makes it different from other ornithomimid genera is the hand size, which are proportionally longer in relation to the rest of the arm. A scientist argued over what this animal actually ate. Some stomach stones have been found with the skeleton suggesting that Struthiomimus was a plant-eating animal. It could have used its narrow beak to pick out the most nutritious parts of plants. The long arms could have been used to reach around branches and pull them down to the mouth level for easy access. There is a theory that Struthiomimus may have fled on insects, that it used the beak to pick out large grubs and other insects. And finally, another group of paleontologists recommended that small reptiles like snakes and lizards, as well as small primitive mammals, may have also been preyed on. These days, it is thought of Struthiomimus to be an omnivore that could have had skills to adapt to whatever food was available. It is believed that Struthiomimus roamed in North America, mainly in Canada, Alberta, being the Dinosaur Park Formation and Horseshoe Canyon Formation, and in the USA, the Hell Creek Formation, in the late Campanian to early Maastrichtian of the Cretaceous period. Herbivorous animals existed in numbers far beyond predators. There was an abundance of Ceratopsian dinosaurs, and Euplocephalus represented Ankylosaurs. Whereas Edmontosaurus was a very known hadrosaur that also lived in the area. All herbivorous dinosaurs or other animals were terrorized by large Tyrannosaurs, such as Albertosaurus. A smaller Dromaeosaurus liked eating Struthiomimus too. Scientists consider ostrich dinosaurs such as Struthiomimus and Dromaeosaurus as fast running as an ostrich. Three of them have evolved splinters' legs. Their shins are longer than thighs, so are the feet and toe bones. Ostriches are one of the fastest living land animals. According to National Geographic, they can sprint at up to 43 miles an hour and run over distance at 31 miles an hour. Many scientists still regard Struthiomimus along with many other genera of ornithomimids, as merely species of ornithomimus. Despite the difference, both genera are still very similar and have been the most common types of ornithomimid of North America. Pelicanimimus. We are now leaving North America and going to Europe, where the remains of Pelicanimimus were found. It was Armando Diaz Romero who discovered a theropod skeleton at the Las Hoyas Unit 3 site in Spain, Cuenca Province, Calizas de la Jorgina Formation, in July 1993. A year later, it was named and described by Bernardino Perez Marino. José Luis Sanz, Angela Buscalioni, José Moratala, Francesco Ortega, and Diego Raskin Gutman as a new species. Pelicanimimus polyodon. The generic name is derived from the Latin pelicanus or pelican 
and Mimas being Mimic, in reference to its pelican-like look, in particular that it had a long snout and a skin throat pouch. The second part of the name is a reference to the large number of teeth possessed by this theropod, and is originated from Greek polis, or many, and odos, meaning tooth. It was the first specimen of ornithomimid dinosaur described from Europe. The remains are kept at the Museum de Cuenca in Spain. The only known specimen consists of the articulated front half of a skeleton and includes a skull, lower jaws, all the neck vertebra and most of the back vertebra, the ribs, sternum, pectoral girdle, and a complete right forelimb and most of the left forelimb. Not very often have remains of the soft parts been found. The soft parts of the Pelicanomimus are visible at the back of the skull, around the neck and around the front limbs. Pelicanomimus is thought to be one of the earliest ornithomimids from Europe that lived in the Baramean of the Cretaceous period. It was a more basal form, but quite a unique one. This theropod had more and tinier teeth than any other dinosaur in the group, the teeth in the upper jaw were larger than those in the lower. It had more than 70 teeth in the upper jaw and about 150 teeth in the lower jaw. The teeth in the front of the upper jaw were broad and D-shaped in cross-section, while those further back were blade-like. In later ostrich dinosaurs, the teeth must have become smaller until all completely disappeared and became replaced with a keratinous beak. There was only one other ornithomimosaur known to possess teeth, Harpimimus, which had only 11 teeth in total and only in the lower jaw. The presence of such a large number of teeth in Pelicamimus, coupled with a lack of interdental space, was interpreted by Perez Marino and his colleagues as an adaption for cutting and ripping. The same function would have been performed by the edge of the beak in the later toothless ornithomimosaurs. Pelicanimimus also had a keratinous crest atop its head. The bones in the lower arm were placed tight together to give an additional rigidity. The claws that grew from the end of the fingers were straight, which was typical in basal ornithomimosaurs. Soft tissue impressions also revealed that the skin was bare and wrinkled, which indicates that Pelicanimimus did not have feathers. The mysterious fibers were described as muscle remnants and some scientists speculated that Pelicanomimus may have been capable of flight or to be a recent descendant from a flying animal. Pelicanomimus was a small ornithomimosaur at about 1.9 to 2.5 meters or 6.2 to 8.2 feet in length and had an estimated weight of 17 to 30 kilograms or 2.7 to 4.7 stones. It is believed that it was a predator its remains were found near an ancient lake. It is possible that it had paddled out into shallow water, using its claws that could have served as a hook and teeth to capture fish or other small aquatic vertebrates like frogs which were stored in the pouch. To drain out the water, they perhaps tipped their head forward and then threw back their head and swallowed the food whole. Food could have been stored in its pouch to be taken back to their hatchlings. Pelicanimimus lived by and hunted in shallow waters. Therefore, there is a big chance that they would have come into contact with spinosaurid dinosaurs, such as Baryonyx, although most spinosaurs are thought to have been specialist fish hunters. A small Pelicanimimus could have easily become Baryonyx food. Both animals shared the same area to find prey. However, it is unlikely that they competed for the same food due to Pelicanimimus's restrictions to only small-sized prey. Pelicanimimus would also have to be aware of the whereabouts of the theropod Concavenator, as they preyed on all sorts of small to medium-sized animals. Iguanodon was one of the most common of the European plant-eating dinosaurs of the Cretaceous that lived in the same area. So were some primitive birds, such as Eulolavus and Iberomosaurus. Pelicanimimus was a fundamentally important find, which lent to a greater understanding of the development of the Ornithomimosauria, 
It shows the road of evolutionary development to the toothless Ornithomimosauria. Gallimimus The last, but certainly not the least, is Gallimimus. Gallimimus remains were found between 1963 and 1965 during the expedition led by the Polish Academy of Sciences and the Mongolian Academy of Sciences, and the paleontologists travelled to the Gobi deserts of Mongolia. The largest skeleton was discovered by paleontologist Zofia Kielan Jaworowska in the Sargankushu in 1964. The preserved remains of the dinosaur were lying on its back, and the skull was found under its pelvis. The holotype consisted of an almost complete skeleton with a distorted snout, incomplete lower jaw, vertebral series, and pelvis, although there were some missing hand and foot bones. Gallimimus was assigned to the family Ornithomimidae and named by Osmolska, Eva Ronievich, and Richard Barsbold in 1972, placing it next to Struthiomimus as the closest relative. It was a difficult task for the team, as the comparison between taxa was complicated because other ornithomimids known at the time were either poorly preserved or inadequately described. In the following years, it was pointed out by another paleontologist that the difference between Asian and North American ornithomimids laid in the shape of the beak. Gallimimus had a duck or goose-rounded beak, whereas the North American species had pointed beaks. The name meaning is chicken mimic, in reference to the front part of the neck vertebra, which resembles those of the Gallimimus form. It was derived from Latin gas, or chicken, and the Greek mimos, or mimic. The specific name bolatus was derived from the Latin bulla, a gold capsule worn by Roman youth around the neck. This dinosaur had a bulbous capsule on the paracephanoid at the base of the skull, and it was unusual for other reptiles to have such a feature. There was a second species of Gallimimus, the Gallimimus mongoliensis, described by Richard Barsbold in 1996. However, he changed his mind in 2006, and Barsbold declared the remains to be a yet unknown ornithomimid dinosaur. It is believed that Gallimimus lived in the Maastrichtian times of the Cretaceous period, around 74 to 70 million years ago, in Mongolia, in the Nemegd Formation. The Ornithomimus lived in a dry region of semi-desert, where plants were most plentiful along moist river banks or valleys. While looking for something to eat, Gallimimus could itself become its predator's dinner if it were not careful. At the time, Tarbosaurus represented an Asian species of Tyrannosaurus, Gigantoraptor was another example of a giant oviraptorid dinosaur that roamed Mongolia at the time. Therefore, a key to the survival strategy of Gallimimus and other ornithomimids was fast running. In 1982, paleontologist Richard A. Tholborn estimated that Gallimimus could have run at speeds of 42 to 56 kilometers per hour or 29 to 34 miles per hour. Although quite fast, they would not have been as quick as ostriches, partially due to their arms and tails increasing their weight. Numerous individuals, including juveniles, have been found, making it possible for scientists to analyze how this genus and other ornithomimids as a group developed over different life stages. It is still debated if Gallimimus and ornithomimids in general may have had primitive downy feathers for body insulation. However, it is still suspected that a fully grown adult may have lost those feathers. Gallimimus is thought to be the largest known ostrich dinosaur. The adult individual could reach a length of about 6 meters or 19 feet and 6 inches. It could weigh about 200 kilograms or 31.5 stones. Although some isolated fossils suggest that some individuals may have grown larger to up to 8 meters, which is about 26 feet. 
The head was small, like in birds, and placed on a long, flexible neck. It had big eyes on the side of its head, giving a wide view. It was an advantage for Gallimimus to spot threats from almost any direction, but lacked the detailed depth perception that is a trait of specialized predatory animals. When compared to birds such as chickens, they often have such eye arrangement and yet are still capable of hunting other small animals and invertebrates. Adult individuals had a small skull in proportion to the body. The toothless snout, however, is still longer than most other ornithomimids. It was tipped with a broad, toothless and keratinous beak. What this dinosaur ate is still unclear, without having the evidence of stomach remains to give additional clues. It is possible that it was an omnivore. Gallimimus was capable of filtering feeding water plants and small aquatic animals due to the beak's underside series of thin tube-shaped structures. Modern ducks and geese have similar structures in their beaks for feeding this way. It was suggested by other paleontologists that structures in Gallimimus's beak were more adapted for cutting through tough vegetation on land, and that this ornithomimus may have eaten some forms of meat, including insects or other small animals like lizards, snakes, and even mammals. Most likely, it would have had to be swallowed whole due to the lack of teeth to process these foods, and it possibly killed them by picking them up with the beak and throwing them hard against the ground, similarly to the way of modern Seriima birds of South America do today. Gallimimus had quite flexible shoulder joints. Its slim arms were shorter when compared to the other ornithomimids. The hands were quite small, with the palms facing into the body. They were tipped with three not very flexible fingers and curved claws. Gallimimus could have used its hands for picking up plants from the ground, or perhaps snatching eggs from other dinosaurs' nests. The hind limbs had longer shin than thigh bones and were designed for running. It had a very high ankle joint. Three long toes were equipped with sharp claws. Its long, tapered, and stiff tail was perfect for keeping balance of the head and neck. Please know that if any dinosaur from the group has not been covered in this video, it will definitely be talked about in the weeks to come, as we will be revisiting all areas of the world. Nothing will be missed. These videos take a very long time to create. If you would like to support the channel and assist in improving it, then do please subscribe and give us a like, and consider joining our Patreon. Links in the description.